So my conclusion to that is what you've heard isn't really true. I wouldn't... Hey sailors! Welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today I'm going to talk about what it was really like working for Disney Cruise Line. But happy Christmas Eve! Can you believe Christmas is tomorrow? I cannot. It's absolutely nuts. But I'm very excited nevertheless. I went Christmas shopping the other day just before Christmas Eve so I wasn't totally a rush. So I'm in the Christmassy spirit and I'm very excited. But anyway, we're going to talk about Disney Cruise Line because as some of you know, before I went on board Harmony or Royal Caribbean Harmony of the Seas, I was working on Disney Cruise Line's Wish. So the Wish is the latest cruise ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet and then their sister or the Wish's sister ship is going to be coming out early 2024 and it's called the Treasure. And it looks but anyway, let's get into the video. I was a little bit trepidatious when I found out that Josh and I were going to be working on Disney Cruise Line because having worked on cruise ships for just under 10 years, I've heard a lot about Disney Cruise Line and mainly that it's very strict. So having just finished working on board Virgin Voyages ships, which is possibly the most relaxed cruise line out there, I was worried about how big of an adjustment it was going to be going from Virgin to Disney. Arguably the most relaxed cruise line to one of the strictest cruise lines. But I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. It wasn't as strict as I thought it was going to be and, well, we'll get into it. So firstly, I want to mention the organisation. The organisation on Disney Cruise Line is exceptional, absolutely exceptional, starting with the day that me and Josh embarked. So embarkation day for new crew members can be a mess. When I joined Royal Caribbean Harmony of the Seas, me and Josh were waiting around for hours before anyone even came and spoke to us to let us know what was going on. The same when I worked on P&O, the same when I joined uh, Virgin Voyages Valiant Lady, I was waiting around for like five hours because my name wasn't on the list and it can be a real issue. Most of those ships I had to make my own way to. So the company flies you out and then you stay in a hotel but actually getting from the hotel to the cruise ship you make your own way there. Whereas Disney you're put up in a Disney hotel the night before you join this cruise ship and then the coach picks you up at 5am, takes you to Port Canaveral, takes you to the port which is about an hour drive which means that you can relax. As soon as you get on this coach you know that you're in the right place. You know that you're on a coach with loads of other people that are joining the cruise ship. So you can relax because you know this coach is going to take you to the right place. Whereas when you're in a taxi trying to tell the taxi driver where to go but you yourself don't really know where you're going, it can be difficult. So that was wonderful. I mean, we all turned up to the port, we all lined up, uh, they sent sniffer dogs around to sniff everyone's bags and make sure nothing was dodgy. We were like new hires were separated from people who had been before. So me and Josh were brand new to Disney. So we were in the new hire group, even though we'd worked on cruise ships before because every cruise line does it differently. So if you're new to a cruise line, you are treated like a new hire, which is great. It's a good thing. And let me tell you, I had not one of the best, the best joining experience I have ever had in my 10 years working at sea. We were taken on board by the HR rep. There was about six of us who were completely new to Disney. Some were new to cruise ships and some had worked on cruise ships before. So we were taken with the HR rep to the training room where there was tea and coffee waiting for us. We were sat down and he asked if we were all okay. First and foremost, like, I know it can be overwhelming. It was just incredible to have someone acknowledge how hard it can be. Not so much for me and Josh, but for the people who were brand new to cruise ships, I was like, wow, that's really nice that he's basically saying, hey, I know you're stressed, I know you're confused, and what you're feeling is completely valid. It's a confusing situation. And I think, you know, we filled out some forms, uh, we had a little chat, you know, he explained to us the very basics like how to access the internet, what the I-95 is, where the mess is 
And what is a mess? Because if you're brand new and someone says, let's eat at the mess, you're gonna be like, sorry, what? Unless you've watched my videos. <laughs> but it was just really nice that he took the time to explain all of the basics. And even though a few of us didn't really need it, it was really nice to just have your hand held through the process. And if I'm completely honest, it really made me realize how other cruise lines just throw you in the deep end and they're like, yeah, get on with it. And you do get on with it, but oh my gosh, how nice it was to just have everything explained rather than having to ask a million questions. Also, I have filmed this video in 4K. I don't know how it's turned out. I really hope that when I look at the footage, it's not blurry and it's okay. I think this is better. I don't know if you do, but if you think me having filmed this in 4K is better, please let me know. Again, if you don't, please let me know. We are trialing stuff out while we're at home, so when you join any cruise ship, you're gonna have training, safety training. There's gonna be a lot of training. And as I mentioned in my last video, the training on board Disney is all done in person, as opposed to a lot of cruise lines now, all the training is online and you're just expected to do it in your free time, which you don't have much of. So for the first week that we were on board the Disney Wish, we would be taken out of work, only maybe like an hour a day or something. We would go into the classroom and we would do, I don't know, watertight door training or medical training or and it was really lovely that it was done in person because if you didn't quite understand something you could ask a question and you also had someone to keep you accountable to make sure that you were retaining the information and something else I actually really liked about Disney is if you go on a Disney cruise ship either as a crew member or a passenger you will notice that the crew name tags do not have a position on so like if you go on any other cruise line pretty much it'll be Lucy shopping ambassador, Greg, a chef, you know, it will have their position on. On Disney, it just has their name and where they're from. Because the idea is they want everyone to kind of act like guest services. So if a passenger goes up to Greg, the chef, and says, hey, do you know what time this show is on later? What Disney don't want is Greg to go, I'm a chef. I have no idea, go to guest services. They want Greg to take accountability of that passenger and say, let me find out for you. Or if he already knows the answer, then amazing. And at first I was a little bit like, oh, that's different. But having seen it in action, I was like, this is, this is great because there isn't a really long line at guest services because every crew member isn't just sending people to guest services because they don't know the answer. And it just makes for a better experience for the passenger because every single crew member is committed to being helpful, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And also, during our first week or first day, they give us a little, um, a little pin to put by your name tag that says earning my ears and it's basically a sign that you're brand new on board so if, if a passenger does ask you a question and you don't know the answer you could point to earning my ears and be like I'm really sorry I'm new but it's not a get out of jail free card because you're still expected to find out the answer as in you could say I'm new I don't know however let me find out for you and again I just thought that was really nice. It's lovely for the newbie because it's kind of a little bit of a security blanket, but it's also good for the passenger as well. Probably my favorite thing about working on Disney is the culture that they have cultivated on board. They really have nailed just an incredible culture on board. I think with just with the name badge thing that I just mentioned, there is a real undercurrent of helpfulness and that isn't just crew to passengers that is crew to crew as well like I have never worked with a friendlier more helpful set of people and something I really noticed is on our first few days or mine and Josh sorry on our first few days on board we would be walking down the I-95 and people were like welcome on board because they could see the earning earning your ears welcome on board do you need any help um, how are you? You know, just never seen these people before, but so friendly, so helpful. And the nice thing is that because that was my experience when I first got on board, 
you best believe that when I saw people walking up and down the I-95 with their earning my ears sign on, looking a little bit lost, I was like, hey, how are you? Welcome on board. Do you need any help? Because that expectation was set and I just think it is the most wonderful thing that there really is this culture of support and everyone is looking out for each other. So I know you're probably watching this video hoping for a little bit of dirt on Disney, but honestly, I'm just gonna be singing their praises. And it's not because I have to. And it actually, a lot of you know that when I was on Disney, I wasn't allowed to post because obviously Disney has such strict social media rules. And it's a real shame because I actually don't have anything bad to say about them like genuinely and going off that safety oh my god i have never felt safer i have never ever felt safer because of the organization because of the culture of you know friendliness and support because on other ships the safety roles are dictated by what job you do so a casino manager is going to have a more important safety role than laundry staff or housekeeping do you see what I mean? Because the idea is, well, if you're a manager, you must have better people skills, you must have better organisation skills. So the, the theory is right. However, to run a muster station, you need to be good at public speaking. You need to be confident. And you can have a manager, you can have a department manager who doesn't like public speaking. I had many spa managers that got me to do all the seminars and the raffles and the pamper parties because they didn't like public speaking. Even though I was just a spa therapist and it wasn't my job, I don't mind public speaking. So I did it. And the thing on Disney is they take individual qualities into account. So if let's say on paper, the casino manager should be a muster station leader, but actually the casino manager, Gavin, isn't a very good public speaker or, you know, is missing an essential quality needed to run the muster station, they will happily put someone who is in a lesser ranking position, but maybe they're really good at public speaking. Like they take individual qualities into account. Now this means you actually have competent people running muster stations and divvying out different safety jobs, etc. So therefore, Everything's super organised, everyone knows what they're supposed to be doing and where they're supposed to be at certain times during an emergency. And I just really appreciated that. It is harder for the cruise line. It's a lot more paperwork, but it's brilliant. They really don't cut corners. Now this brings me on to probably the most anticipated part, which is how strict is it? Is it actually as strict as people say Disney Cruise Line is? If you are going on board to work and do a good job, you will be fine. If you are going on board to work on a cruise ship to maybe slack off, you're looking for a vacation, which believe me, I know sounds stupid, but people do it, you will have a hard time. On Disney, they have very, very high expectations and you're expected to meet them. I personally didn't find it too strict because I tried to do the best I could do at my job. However, I do know some people did find it strict. I'm not saying they were bad at their job, I'm just maybe saying they were a little bit lazy. And people can see right through that. So you are going to find it strict if you're going to try and cut corners and not do your best. Because that is the expectation, that you do your best. And honestly, if, if a leader can see that you're doing your best, they honestly back off. I mean, to be fair, this is the same in any company, but especially on Disney, um, laziness really isn't tolerated, which I love. I really enjoyed that because it means that everyone, everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone is doing their best and therefore work is easier because no one's having to pick up the slack. Like everyone is working towards a common goal. And as I said, I think in my previous video, I actually found Royal Caribbean to be stricter than Disney. And I was on the Disney Wish, which is Disney's brand new ship, compared to the Harmony, which is actually quite an old ship. 
for Royal Caribbean. Now the reason I point that out is because the newer the ship, the rules are going to be more intense because there's a lot of eyeballs on it. So really the fact that it was Disney but also the fact that it was their brand new ship, I did expect it to be... Whereas because Harmony of the Seas is like 10 years old now, I didn't expect it to be strict at all. So that was a real shock, finding that Disney's brand new ship was more relaxed than Royal Caribbean's older ship. And when I say more relaxed, it's not the most relaxed. Like obviously Virgin Voyages was way more relaxed than Disney. However, I didn't find it hard to adjust to at all because it was very simple rules like don't use passenger elevators, you, well, because of the rank that I was, I was allowed to use guest areas if they weren't busy, which to be honest is exactly the same as every other cruise line I've been on, except Royal Caribbean. You know, Virgin, Virgin started as a free-for-all, like you can do what you want when you want, but when they realised that that wasn't working, the same rules came into play. You can only use guest spaces when they're not busy. And it's the same on Disney. Now again, it, that does depend on what rank you are. The higher status you have, the more freedom you are going to have on board. It was just a really lovely, supportive environment to be in. So maybe that played into the fact that it didn't feel so strict because everyone was so nice, I don't know. Uh, but no, we, me and Josh did not find the rules hard to adjust to. And actually, I thought Josh, and for anyone watching, Josh is my boyfriend. Sorry, I mention him like everybody knows who he is. Uh, but Josh has only worked on Virgin Voyages. So if anyone was going to have an issue adjusting to the rules, it would probably be Josh. Because his only experience of cruise ships is Virgin Voyages, which is the most lenient cruise line ever. But he found it, he found it fine. So my conclusion to that is the rumours aren't really true. I wouldn't describe Disney Cruise Line as strict. They're strict enough, but no, I think from what I've heard, I'd probably say MSC, Royal Caribbean, is stricter than Disney. And if I experienced theoretically the strictest it can be because I was on the brand new ship, then... No. So I think you've noticed by now, I only have good things to say about Disney. And I hope you do too, whether you've been on a Disney cruise or whether you've worked on Disney Cruise Line. But let me know in the comments, because I would actually be really interested to know what the general opinion is and what you think of Disney Cruise Line. So let me know in the comments if you agree with what I'm saying, if you disagree with what I'm saying, and I look forward to reading them. The food. The food was amazing. Now I am going to be completely transparent. I was considered an officer, so I got to eat in the officer's mess. The food is better in the officer's mess, better than the crew mess. But I did eat in the crew mess a few times and it was fine. It wasn't as good as Virgin, but it was a lot better than Royal Caribbean. So yeah, the food on Disney was good. And the food in the officer's mess was fantastic. The salary. Pretty much whatever job you do working on board Disney Cruise Line, you're gonna get paid more than on any other cruise line because they expect more. As I said earlier, the expectation is high. But if you're going on board to work and you're gonna try your best, then go on Disney. You're gonna earn more. And as I said, I didn't find it as strict as the other cruise lines. And actually, and this is no shade to Virgin Voyages because you know I love Virgin Voyages. I thoroughly enjoyed my time working with them. But I met, yeah, nine people. When Virgin Voyages first came out and they promised, you know, high wages, all of this good stuff, they left Disney. They went to Virgin and they came back to Disney. And there was a lot of stories about that, leaving for Virgin and then coming back to Disney. Disney are just great, like re really great. And then crew facilities. So obviously I can only talk about the Wish because that is the only Disney ship that I have worked on. <sighs> but the crew facilities were the best of any ship that I have ever been on, even Virgin Voyages. They had an outdoor bar, which was, really really big 
So you could go up to deck, I think 16 at the end of a night and have a drink outside looking at the stars and get some fresh air and it was just amazing. They obviously had an indoor crew bar, which to be honest, was the same as any other crew bar, but it was a good size. They had individual karaoke rooms. They had a games room, the best games room I've ever seen. The most games and the best decorated. They had a coffee lounge and actually the crew coffee bar was great. Normally, if you go to the crew coffee bar, the, the selection is limited. However, on Disney Wish, they had every kind of milk, soy, oat, almond, cow's milk, every kind of milk, every kind of flavoured syrup. They even did like chai teas. They, I mean, the selection was as good as the passenger coffee selection, which is very rare. But the most impressive thing is obviously Disney Cruise Line have their very own private island called Castaway, just like Royal Caribbean have Perfect Day at Coco Cay. They have built a crew beach on Castaway, which is incredible. When I was working on Royal Caribbean, if I got off in Perfect Day at Coco Cay, there is no um, specific area for the crew. Crew can get off and have a good day on there, absolutely fine, but you eat with passengers, you sunbathe with the passengers, and while you would think this is fine, it, I mean, it is fine, but you have to be on your best behavior because of course you're surrounded by passengers and you can't completely relax. Now, I'm not saying that crew members are gonna go wild, but like, you have to watch what you're saying. You can't have a really candid conversation with your friend because you're surrounded by passengers and you can't risk passengers overhearing your conversation, maybe, depending on what it's about. Whereas Disney on Castaway have built a crew beach, which is idyllic. There's free canoes, there's free canoes, there's free lilos, there's obviously showers and toilets, and there is a burger bar and a salad bar there, just for crew, which is unbelievable. So the crew facilities are the best, the best, the best, the best. So we've gone through salary, crew facilities, pay, culture, safety, food, and how strict Disney Cruise Line are. I genuinely have nothing bad to say. It was a wonderful experience. I'm not even a big Disney fan. Like I'm really not I enjoy the odd Disney film, but I'm not like a Disney fanatic, but I loved it. And that's the other thing, actually. A lot of people say like, oh, well, I wouldn't go on a Disney cruise because I'm not ultra into Disney. You, you don't need to be. You really don't need to be. Honestly, I couldn't say enough good things and bold statement. But if I was going to start my cruise ship career again, I'd have only gone on Disney. I know, I know, I'm surprised too, but there you go. I loved it. So, if you want to hear more about Disney, I would love to do another video on Disney because I love it when I don't have anything bad to say, if I'm honest. And if you are going to work on Disney, you're going to have a great time. And if you are going to cruise on Disney, oh my God, are you going to have a good time. And if you're going on the treasure, I am very, very jealous. I would love to go. It's going to be incredible. And also, if you want to know any more about Disney, let me know in the comments. If you have been on a Disney cruise or if you have worked on Disney Cruise Line, let me know what you think of it. And if your opinion differs to mine, because it might. But anyway, that is it for this video. But thank you so much for watching. And I just hope you have a fantastic Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. If not, just have a wonderful few days. <laughs> but yeah, if you do, have a great time. I am going to eat myself into a food coma and I cannot wait. And I hope you have the opportunity to do the same with your loved ones. But I really appreciate you. I look forward uh, to the next video. The next video will be just before New Year's and then, yeah, 2024, oh my God. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. I love you so much. Happy Christmas and I'll see you next week. <laughs>